Good morning, my fellow scientists. It is Wednesday, June 7th, 2017. I want to talk about hormesis. I was reading an article, a review, in the Journal of Pharmacological Research today, and it was discussing the effects of transient stimuli and how they may have a hormetic or hermetic effect on aging. In other words, transient stresses like brief periods of oxygen loss to a tissue may have a protective effect to later problems like heart attacks, which may seem counterintuitive. You might think, well, shouldn't a brief damage set you up for more damage later? Isn't it like we are partially breaking something and then that weakens it? Well, no, it turns out the body responds uh, to to brief damaging stimuli the way it responds to exercise. It makes the body stronger so that such stimulus later doesn't have as big an effect. This shows up in radiation too. So I was taught when I was being trained to use radioisotopes that there is no safe level of radiation, that the right amount of radiation is zero. But in fact, that is a safety assumption, not a tested true hypothesis, and a small amount of radiation may actually protect a person from radioactive exposure later. And this was known since the 1930s. A study cited in this review talks about how x-ray radiation for a brief period, sublethal doses, will actually make a plant resistant to higher doses of x-ray radiation later, which if that's been known since the 30s, you know, I think that that's pretty well established, been confirmed lots of ways since then in different contexts, even things like there was an incident where radioactive cobalt was in incorporated into a apartment building in Taiwan. People assumed that that population living in that radioactive building were going to come up with more cancer. They came up with less cancer because presumably the low dose of gamma radiation actually induced the people living there to have more repair mechanisms in their cells to prevent the kind of DNA damage that results in cancer. So it's really counterintuitive from the way we typically think of toxic things, poisonous things, damaging things, but it's really sensible from the perspective of exercise. We totally get that what does not kill us makes us stronger as long as we are going out and working out. The same applies to lots of things, it turns out. So what's the molecular mechanism? How is it that, say, reducing the oxygen level to someone's leg briefly makes their heart more resistant to heart attacks later? That seems to be true, and yet the mechanisms are really poorly understood. Some chemical communication is happening between leg muscle and heart muscle, and that communication remains really unclear. It would be really fun for me to participate in the development of the kind of tools that allow that communication to be deciphered. So that's the kind of thing we're working on when we're not working on batteries. So I hope you find that kind of thing interesting. If you like chemistry and biochemistry and cool projects and learning about hormesis, please tune in tomorrow to the Allen Lab.